This video will shed light on Justin Bieber's battle with Ramsey Hunt syndrome. We will discuss what Ramsey Hunt syndrome is and how it's impacting Justin Bieber. There are three neurological syndromes that carry the name Ramsey Hunt syndrome, and these were described by Dr. Ramsey Hunt over 100 years ago. Ramsey Hunt syndrome type 2 is what Justin Bieber has, and is also referred to as herpes zoster oticus. It consists of peripheral facial palsy of the seventh cranial nerve, that is the facial nerve, and herpes blisters that appear in the head and neck area. All the nerves that communicate with the facial nerve can be implicated in Ramsey Hunt syndrome, and that includes cranial nerves 5, 8, 9, and 10, and cervical nerves C2, C3, C4. The cause of Ramsey Hunt syndrome is varicella zoster virus, or VZV. The primary VZV infection that we're all familiar with is what produces chickenpox. After someone gets chickenpox, the virus can essentially go to sleep inside these ganglia of nerves and then it can be reactivated. Once reactivated, the infection can spread throughout dermatomes. The risk factors for reactivation are advancing age and immunosuppression. In talking about peripheral facial neuropathy, it's important to mention that 70% of cases are due to Bell's palsy. That's what's called idiopathic facial palsy. So when we don't know exactly what causes it, we say it's Bell's palsy, and that's most cases. However, in about 5 to 18% of cases, it's caused by Ramsey Hunt syndrome or herpes zoster oticus. So this is actually the second most common cause of non-traumatic peripheral facial palsy. The facial paralysis that you see in Ramsey Hunt syndrome is generally more severe than in Bell's palsy. And Bell's palsy, remember, is attributed to a different virus, or herpes simplex virus. In addition to facial palsy in Ramsey Hunt syndrome, other symptoms include hearing loss, tinnitus, which is ringing in the ears, vertigo, which is a specific kind of dizziness where you have a room spinning sensation, and pain. There are vesicles that appear on the skin that usually will proceed or present simultaneously with facial paralysis. But sometimes these vesicles come in in a delayed way, so you can have the facial paralysis first, and then days or weeks later, you can start to see these vesicles forming. Please make sure to subscribe to our channel. The diagnosis of Ramsey Hunt syndrome is mainly clinical, and we're looking for a combination of ear pain, small vesicles on the outer ear, or on the oral mucosa inside the mouth, and of course facial palsy. Sometimes we see one or two of these signs or symptoms, not necessarily all three. You can confirm the diagnosis of Ramsey Hunt syndrome by isolating and culturing varicella zoster virus from the vesicular fluid or by detecting viral DNA using PCR analysis. If you were to do an MRI study of a patient with Ramsey Hunt syndrome who has facial paralysis, oftentimes there is an enhancement of the nerve in the intratemporal portion of the facial nerve. What that means is the portion of the facial nerve that's running through the bone of the skull. As far as treatments of Ramsey Hunt syndrome, the mainstay treatments are steroids and antiviral medications, but it's important to give these medications early, usually within the first three days of paralysis. That improves the overall prognosis. If these medications are given much later, it really doesn't have as much of a benefit. There is a lack of high quality, randomized, controlled, prospective trials on this condition. However, a lot of our data comes from case studies and retrospective reviews that still is showing that there is a benefit overall to steroids and antivirals. As far as prognosis, facial nerve recovery is generally worse in Ramsey Hunt syndrome compared to Bell's palsy. Significant factors for poor prognosis are a lack of nerve excitability, complete paralysis at the onset of the condition, and age over 50. The good news is that total recovery or recovery with only slight sequela is obtained in over 80% of patients who receive antiviral therapy within the first 72 hours of Ramsey Hunt syndrome onset. Now let's go over the House Brackman facial paralysis scale because when we look at someone with facial paralysis, it's good to put them into a, a certain category of grade of paralysis, and that helps us determine how severe the paralysis is 
what other consequences there are of the paralysis and just the overall prognosis. So when you look at house brackman scale, you basically have six grades. Grade one is normal, normal facial function. Grade six is absolute total paralysis, no movement at all. And you can see here that as you go from grade one to grade six, it gets more and more severe. So with grade two, you have a normal tone and symmetry at rest, but you have some slight weakness on close inspection. Grade three, you still have complete eye closure with effort, but you're starting to have more obvious signs of weakness. Grade four, you have incomplete eye closure, but you have normal symmetry and tone at rest. With grade five, there's now asymmetry at rest, which is the big difference between four and five. And grade six, again, is total paralysis. So now let's talk about the impact of Ramsey-Hunt syndrome on Justin Bieber. Based on my analysis of Justin Bieber's Instagram video, it looks to me like he's a House Brackman five out of six. So he does have severe dysfunction of his right-sided facial nerve. He has incomplete eye closure on full effort. He has asymmetry at rest of his brows. His right brow sits at a lower point than his left brow because it's unable to be lifted up. This can of course impact his ability to sing and to perform because our facial nerve is so important for the way that our facial muscles move and for the ability for us to produce voice and to properly sing. The factors that are in his favor are that he's under 50 years old. He also started with what appears to be incomplete paralysis. So he's not House Brackman 6, it looks like he's more of a House Brackman 5, and that's good for overall prognosis. Also, Justin probably was started on the right medications early, given his access to world-class healthcare. So given all this, I estimate about an 80 to a 95% chance of complete facial nerve recovery based on the current data. It's important to also discuss eye protection. Oftentimes when the eye isn't closing completely, it exposes the eye to a lot of irritation and also the tear flow to the eye is not perfect. So there are things that we recommend that people do for incomplete eye closure, especially at night. So that includes a moisture chamber, applying basically a special kind of patch onto the eye to keep it closed and to keep it moisturized. Sometimes we tell patients to tape the eye at night. And also for cases where there's prolonged inability to close the eye, some patients actually undergo surgery to put a gold weight on their upper eyelid that helps bring the eyelid down so they can then close their eye. Hearing loss is common on presentation. It affects about 50% of patients with Ramsey-Hunt syndrome. And most do recover. So you can imagine though, even if Justin has temporary hearing loss, which I don't know if he does, not his treating doctor, but if he does, even just the slightest amount of hearing loss in a singer of his caliber can of course be quite debilitating. Because of the facial nerves communication with other cranial nerves, as I mentioned earlier, such as cranial nerve 10, which is the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is the nerve that controls the vocal cords. So because of that, there have been cases of patients having difficulty with their voice, with swallowing, and with breathing, all from Ramsey-Hunt syndrome. Now this is very serious and it's actually very rare, but just realize that there are some cases of situations like that. Also, post-herpetic neuralgia can be a problem. And that basically means that even once he's recovered and let's say his facial nerve is better and his vesicles, if he has any, are gone, he could still have chronic pain in the region where the vesicles were. And this can also be quite debilitating and it's usually treated with a medication called gabapentin. Now, I had my own bout with facial nerve paralysis a few years ago. Mine was from Bell's Palsy and we'll show a clip here. Hey guys, Dr. Gary here. So I haven't been posting much because I look like this. <laughs> As you saw in my last post, I had Bell's Palsy on the right side. If anything, it's gotten a little bit worse. I'm actually going to get my cornea checked uh, tomorrow because um, it kind of closes, but not like completely all the way. So I want to make sure I don't have a, an abrasion or something like that. I've been covering it up at night. But yeah, it's kind of affecting like how I talk, how I eat, 
Um, you know, so I always have to apologize to my patients that like, I'm sorry, you know, I look like this, but, uh, luckily I can still do, you know, most of my work. My hands still work well. I had various forms of acupuncture and electromuscular stimulation to try and improve quickly. And I'm sure Justin has access to all of these non-traditional healing techniques that will hopefully help him recover quickly. It was a terrible, terrible experience and something I wouldn't wish on anybody. So I know that Justin is going through a really hard time now. As you know from my other videos, I am a huge Justin fan and I truly hope that he recovers as soon as possible. Justin, feel better. Our hopes and prayers are with you during this difficult time.